Hello everyone and welcome to Usability. Today we are going to see how to play Dragon Nest M Classic on PC using the amazing Bluestacks 5, that is designed for blazing fast speed and high octane action, and it has faster performance than any other high-end Android device or Android platform. We will be able to easily download and install Dragon Nest M Classic and enjoy the game on our Windows PC or laptop with keyboard, mouse and big screen thanks to Bluestacks 5, which is the Android emulator that we recommend to play Dragon Nest M Classic. So without further ado, let's get to it. Before anything else my friends, to start we have to open our main browser. We open the one we prefer. Let's continue, going to the current URL I'm highlighting in green. Now, you can see on the PC screen. There is no need to type this URL, simply because there's a link in the description of this video and as well in the first main comment. Once clicking on that link, we reach the website of Bluestacks. No panic, it is just the Android emulator that we are going to run to play Dragon Nest M Classic on the PC. As you can discover here we have some advantages of running that emulator. Now we are on the way to proceed to download the Dragon Nest M Classic by clicking on the button play on Bluestacks that I have marked in green color. We then click on it. Of course, the download step takes no time at all. Here it is, this is the download. It's a file to execute. The following step is to run the installer, ok, so we need to click on the file. Windows 10 users will be asked for permission to allow modifications to the device. We have clicked yes. I reduce the web browser to start to see the installation software better. The installation software is very simple to use. It is made up of two possibilities, install and setup path. I am going to make it clear what setup path genuinely does. We just simply click on it. And now we realize that we end up with here the path where in fact the emulator can be set up. If we would you like to modify this directory we are required to click on this, browse, option. Therefore we opt for another folder and set up the emulator specifically where we choose. To keep it simple, just leave it where it is. Then, I click on back. And therefore I pick install. Great, the install commences and it's going to carry on with the download of all these megabytes that happens to be presented on that computer screen. The time you save it on your computer, it might possibly be slightly more or less MB. The data transfer speed might go at a higher speed or at a lower speed, subject to your connection and depending on the speed capacity of the emulator web servers. Now they are going superbly fast. The download is finished, and now it proceeds with the installation phase. With Bluestacks 5 you can even reduce RAM usage with a single click. Especially useful if you ever face performance related problems. In addition, you can activate Eco Mode to enjoy 87% reduced CPU usage. 97% reduced GPU usage and easier multitasking. As you can see, Bluestacks 5 is built to provide stability and performance during long gaming sessions. The installation has already finished for me. At this point, the emulator has actually been started on autopilot. As you will notice, at the bottom of the screen, there's a progress bar that will advance to the right and once it gets into the end, the emulator is going to be started for the very first time. The reality is the emulator is already started, here it is for the very first time. Before we continue, as you can see, it made two software icons right here on the computer desktop. The Bluestacks and Bluestacks multi-instance. Note that the Bluestacks app icon is the one we are considering. When we need to launch Dragon Nest M Classic on the desktop or laptop, we twice click on this app icon and therefore start the emulator. The Bluestacks multi-instance icon allows you to launch multiple emulator instances. And with Bluestacks 5's new improved multi-instance manager in eco mode, players can run more game instances faster and with less lag. We should make the following step, which is a must-have, and that's to visit the Google Play Store. To achieve this we will go there to, System Apps, we click. And we'll mouse click on Play Store. As you will notice the Google Play is presented. At this point we have got to sign in. At present the moment we're here, we must absolutely accomplish the next phase which is absolutely mandatory so that we just click on sign in at this point it announces checking info it might occasionally get stuck in checking info that's why it doesn't continue in that case you should attempt to log in in after a number of hours and it'll most likely be corrected at this point we can provide our login name and password the email address really needs to be a gmail email and its related password as an example you could use the very same email you're using currently in your own youtube account then I am going to insert my info and I'll revisit after I have done it. That's all, information typed. Here is Google welcoming us and providing us the terms of service. We would approve all of them by just pressing, I agree. After that, it allows us to back up to the Google Cloud. 
You can also leave it checked and it'll generate a backup of your files on that device to Google Drive. I will not select it, you do what you want. We click accept. The Google Play Store is started automatically and automatically. To set up the app game, we would need to visit the emulator desktop for Android by clicking the app icon designated green colored. Today that we are exploring the desktop of this emulator, we observe that we find there the install video game button. We then click on that button. Right here we come with the Android game. So let's just click there on the install option that I am showing now in green color. Therefore it will launch the software setup. At this moment it should install the video game, it usually takes a bit of time or perhaps it might well be almost immediate. It again all is going to depend on our own web connection. It has by then completed setting up. Now, let's go to the emulator desktop by simply clicking this button that I am showing in green, that allows you to start Dragon Nest M Classic for the very first time. We are currently on the emulator desktop, and we are about to just click on that fresh Dragon Nest M Classic software icon which has been provided. That Android game is started for the very first time. Here we have it, I am able to mouse click anywhere on the screen and also make use of the keyboard. I am going to talk about the sound level of this emulator. It's here, we use the icon of higher volume and also the icon of lower volume, this way we don't rely on the Microsoft Windows volume to increase or decrease the music of your emulator. As well as to appreciate the experience to the greatest, we will turn on the big screen, for which we have two alternatives. That is simply the very first one, we then click on this particular icon that I'm designating in green. Then the display screen is maximized, enjoying one border on top, one at the right and one at the bottom. Supposing that we choose to have fun with the game in full screen, we click that software icon. And we might presently be experiencing the game in full screen function. To stop the complete screen functionality, push the F11 key. And we just end up being in regular screen mode. At this moment I am on the way to demonstrate to you the keyboard mapping and that is actually surprisingly helpful. This means we will probably be in a position to make use of the game application a lot more easily. The first task is to mouse click this application icon. And right now there you will have the ability to get the necessary setups. I am about to keep the normal configuration, though if you wish to adjust this, you may very well do so with no problem. Obviously, the emulator is fully in our own language. Sometimes it happens that the emulator is presented in the incorrect language, for instance, in Japanese. Then to set it up in the appropriate language we go there to the cogwheel. So right here throughout many other controls, we click on the language drop down. We can also pick the language we need, Spanish, Mandarin, and so on. After the language is determined, we could save, the emulator would restart, and also the Android game, next time we start it, would as well be in the opted for language. At this time, you will find another information that we must take into account, and this is that we will receive a message from Google indicating that a different equipment has been associated with this Google account. It definitely will check with us if we are the people who have connected that device. That's right, we must not be troubled, considering that the emulator is acting as in Google Android electronic device. And then to determine which tablet or smartphone is being emulated, we come back here, to the cogwheel and we mouse click on it. And so we browse here to the, model, choice. And here we observe that the emulator is acting as a Samsung smartphone. And so we're going to receive an email saying that a new Samsung device has been connected to our Google account. This is it guys, so much for our tutorial. I hope that you liked it, particularly that you thought it was handy. If that's so, bring it a nice like, subscribe to the channel, and if you have feedback, requests or ideas, let them in the comment box down below. Check out any of those video tutorials that are showing up on the computer screen and let's have fun again in the following video game videos. Bye.